All right, let's get started. So tonight we are going to take a look at the tutorials in the game. Specifically, we want to take a look at all of the um, smallest details for punctuation, grammar, uh, spelling mistakes, also wording, and make sure everything's okay in that regard. This is the campaign designer. From here, you'll make several choices about how your next playthrough will be structured. This selection, these selections offer a range of difficulty options for you to adjust the challenge you're comfortable with. The various effects are listed to the left. These toggles will change how the game is played fundamentally in addition to the difficulty adjustments. Hovering them will list their effects to the right. Relics control the number of units you can accommodate in your company. These are permanently unlocked as special rewards in-game. The gemstones represent the available slots for this relic. When deploying into battle, the heroes in your company will be arranged around a central hexagon in this formation, with the forward position at the top. Based on the selected relic, a number of slots will become available here, corresponding to the available slots for the relic. I feel like relic is spoken too much here. I'm not sure how to change that wording, but I feel like the wording is a little bit redundant. Based on the selected relic, the number of slots will become available here, corresponding to the available slots for the relic. Yeah, it's, it's a bit redundant. You can click this icon to select from the classes you have permanently unlocked during the course of your adventures. Unclassed mercenary recruits will promote into a random class upon reaching level 1, including classes you haven't unlocked yet. So I feel like page 8 here, um, hang on just one second. I feel like pages 7 and 8 can be collapsed into a single page. Um, we can expand the box's size here, um, probably pretty enough to at least contain both of these in a single page. Um, when you're satisfied with your settings above, with the settings above, When you're satisfied with the settings above, you can press the Begin button to start your journey. Welcome to Valley Nights. This is the world map. From here, you can see various locations in the world and how they connect. The Adventure Tracker will update with brief description of your current objectives. With a brief description of your current objectives, there's a plurality issue there. I think we either say with brief descriptions of... Because 
we know that there can be multiple objectives in the adventure tracker, I think that's probably the best way to go. Um, with brief descriptions of... If you get lost or you're not sure what to do next, look here. This panel shows you a heads-up overview of the members of your company and their general health. You can click these panels to jump to that hero at your campsite. I feel like maybe there's an off chance that a, a player could potentially click here. So I want to make that a dead zone. Uh, page 3 I want to prevent clicks for now. This is just for information's sake. So I think if I uh, if I create a dead zone over here, I can't intercept a player click uh, and then distract. And then all of a sudden we've got tutorials that are showing up for the wrong system. So, yeah. From here, you can access the various activities available to you while your company is camping. Merchants will show up here when they are nearby. Locations in the world are indicated by tokens that generally represent what you might find there. Your company is indicated by this map pin. Campaigns and stories will be identifiable by a large glowing beacon. Orange for the primary campaign and blue for the dynamic adventures you've discovered along the way. So I think uh, that's probably all I've got there. So let's move on to the crafting tutorial. This is the crafting lab. A makeshift alchemy station set up in your company's caravan where you can create all sorts of interesting things. These are the recipes you know. As you travel the world, you will find new recipes and blueprints, either as encounter rewards or purchased from merchants. Recipes you discover will be unlocked permanently for all future runs, even after the company that discovered it has passed on. I think we can probably collapse that page and the previous page. So we've got page 2, 3 should get a collapse. Yeah. We're basically staying in the same spot and dropping, asking the user to for an additional click here. I think that's probably unnecessary. So if we can extend the, the dialogue a little bit um, and collapse those two pages. There's a little bit of a, a highlight area there that's overlapping, but I suppose we can leave it. These are the components of the recipe that you'll need to make the item, along with their required quantities. Along, how about we say along with the required quantities for each, rather than their required quantities. Uh, page 4, uh, the required quantities for each. I suppose that's saying the same thing. Um, I just don't, I'm, I'm not big on the their required quantities. Who's required quantities? The required quantities for each of the crafting components is implied at the end of that sentence. I think that's probably grammatically better. Of course, professional editors will probably disagree. So I don't like the hotspot on page five. Other, rather the highlight on page five. We can definitely clean that up. The outcome of the recipe will be displayed here, along with more information about what you're making and its value. The outcome or the product? I feel like maybe... 
The outcome of the recipe will be displayed here along with more information about what you're making and its value. Yeah, that's probably okay for now. Let's move on to the caravan tutorial. This is the caravan. You can manage items for the entire party here along with any items that are in the area that haven't been claimed. Items here are accessible to heroes in your company from the hero editor, comma, Items here are accessible to heroes in your company from the hero editor and will go with the company when it travels. You can drop items on this button to destroy them forever. Uh, you can't drop multiple items, so let's be more clear. On page 3, you can drop an item on this button to destroy it forever. Because you can't drop more items than once. I, I suppose you can, but that's only if they're stacked. Logically speaking, the player is only destroying one item. Next. Items here will be left behind. Don't worry though, they won't disappear or decay, so you can come back to get them if you really need to. Moving on to the campsite. This is your company's campsite. From here you can manage the company's formation or individual heroes and their loadouts. This icon represents this hero's position when the company deploys into a battle. The center gem represents the center position with the forward position at the top. Heroes will deploy relative to it. In the future, you can change this hero's position by clicking this icon, then on the hero that you, that you want them to change places with. To change places. So, uh, first, uh, there's a bunch of changes I want to make here. I think if we take pages 2 and 3 and collapse them, then on page 3, Actually, this is a bit funky here, too. The center gem represents the center position with the forward position at the top. I think we can probably scratch the everything after the semicolon on page 2. <coughs> On page 3, in the future, you can change this hero's position by clicking this icon, then on the hero you want them to swap places with. You can change this hero's position by clicking this icon, then on the hero you want them to change places with. This is one of your heroes. Well, I think that's probably obvious. Above, you can see the hero's name and an icon representing its class. I don't like the its here, but there's really no way to determine um, a pronoun for this hero at this point. You can click on the hero to manage its equipment and skills. Again, uh, I wonder if there's a way we can uh, phrase this without requiring the its pronoun. Or without any pron pronouns at all. Without doing his slash her or anything like that, I'm not really sure. Because we are referring to a person. 
how do you refer to a person without using a pronoun? How do you refer to a person in the third person without using a pronoun? Above you can see the hero's name and an icon representing its class. You can click on the hero to manage its equipment and skills. I, it's going to have to stay for now. I don't really know. I don't have a solution for it. I'd love some feedback if you're out there um, and you have some ideas on that tooltip, let me know. Moving into the hero editor. This is the hero editor. From here you can manage the different aspects of the individual heroes in your company. I think we can probably scratch page one, scratch individual. Manage the different aspects of the heroes in your company. You can press Q or E or use these buttons to navigate between heroes. This is an overview of the hero's class, including the class name and icon, along with its current level and experience. Including the class name, icon, current level and experience. Let's just turn that into a genuine list, I think. Page 3. If you're going to list and then use a conjunction and list again, it, just make it a list. This is a detailed view of the hero's core attributes. These numbers represent the character's overall combat strength. So I'm at a, uh, I have a conflict here. I, I really want to go through and explain the individual uh, attributes and what they mean because they are important to the player's success to know what they are and what they do. Um, but I've already got 11 pages on the hero editor. It's a fairly complex section of UI that needs to be explained in a lot of ways. Maybe I can put, uh, do some tool tips, some UI tool tips, just to briefly explain, like, obviously I don't have any tool tips right now, but I could, I suppose, tool tip these, these labels. This panel shows the damage range and engagement rules you can expect from this character's current equipment. This list shows all the different talents this character has learned through class upgrades or training manuals. These icons represent all of the enhancements currently affecting this character, earned either through equipment or training. You can hover your mouse over them for detailed descriptions. So we do have tooltips here. These are the items the hero is currently using. So in previous, we refer to the character as this character. This character, the hero. So there's, there's inconsistency in how we refer to the character hero that we're looking at. We should try to refer to it as the hero or this character. Pick one and go with it. I think I like this character better because we're, we're gonna, trying to illustrate that these stats are particular to this character, not the hero in general. So I think, uh, let's go back here on page three, refer to it as this character. I think we also had that on page four. Yeah. But here we have this character, this character, this character. And then we go back to the hero. So the hero, the hero, and then this character. I think we, hello. I think on page eight, this character. These are the items this character is currently using. You can pick up or place items by clicking them once. 
you can also drop an item you're holding by right clicking. So uh, that's uh, an interesting and unforeseen circumstance. I think uh, maybe page nine, we can force close the caravan. Um, when, when we hit, because if we, if the player goes, oh, I can, I can do that here, then the caravan would have automatically opened. Um, so when we go next, I think we should force close the caravan. Um, and that will show the, I'll show you in a moment. You can click this button to open the company caravan if you want to change equipment or consumables. Yeah, and see, so this would normally be there. That's if we go previous now, then we're properly highlighting the correct button. So definitely on page nine, we want to force that closed. You can drop items directly on your hero to equip or use them, but some items have requirements that must be met first. If, you, the, if this character Again, we're going back to your hero or the hero. So on page 11, this character, just to keep the terminology consistent, if your hero is using, if the, this character is using a container, like a backpack, for example, the slots for that container will appear here. These slots can only hold items that the container is designed for. Yeah. So that does it for the overworld. Um, not completely true, actually. I think we're going to go into the encounter tutorial now. This is the encounter dialogue. Here you'll interact with short text-based encounters describing the events that happen to your company as they travel. <coughs> These short stories will usually be relevant to the region you're in, offering deeper insight into the politics and current events in the area. Here, you'll be presented with a set of options on how to proceed with the encounter, given the prompts and circumstances above. The choices you make will contribute to your affinity score, which could affect the heroes you can recruit and items you can equip. There's no going back, so choose wisely. So I think four and five can be collapsed. Every encounter will have consequences and not all of them will result in combat. Treasures and tragedy await. Welcome to the battle map. Matters that cannot otherwise be resolved will be resettled here, through deadly violence. So we're on the tactics overlay. And we can probably collapse one and two. Combat is played out in turns, with each faction acting completely before passing to the next. Uh, I think I had some feedback re regarding the word faction. I'm going to change that to team. This is the turn encounter. It shows the current round. 
and the current faction turn within that round. If you want to end your turn early, you can click the round counter. Hmm. It shows the current round and the current team turn within that round. Yep, I mean, faction is a pretty standard word to use, but I, I feel like team might be a better word to use there. Um, it's simpler. It's easier to understand. Um... I think maybe uh, I can change on page three. It should say, this is the turn counter. It shows the current team. The current teams, no, I think actually this is probably fine. It's a little bit wonky. I'll, I'll probably get an idea as to how to fix it later. This is the tactical bar. It represents the currently selected character and its current state. I want to change that. Page 4 should go something like it represents the currently selected character and its status and equipment. Uh, It shows it shows everything all the equipment stats and abilities for the current character. For the currently selected character. These bars indicate this hero's current status effects and enhancements along with health in red, conviction in gold, and essence in purple. Health damage is shown on this bar. Losing all health is fatal and heroes that die are gone forever. Conviction represents a hero's will to continue fighting. Losing all conviction can have varying results but will almost always result in loss of control. Essence measures a hero's connection to the astral plane and serves as fuel for many abilities. It does not regenerate without special training or curatives. This hero's active abilities are lined here, along the bottom. Equipped consumables are along the top with their containers. I think uh, the with their containers can probably just get scratched there. Page 9, scratch with their containers. Active abilities are hotkeyed in order from left to right, starting at 1. Pressing the corresponding number key will activate targeting for that ability. And that's not right. Even close. So uh, I'm going to try something here really quick. I want to see if that's an issue with my resolution. So I'm going to drop this down to 1080p, and then I'm going to resume. <coughs> oh.
We're going to move through these. We've already been through them. Yeah, so it is directly related to the 4K resolution, unfortunately. So I'm going to just do that again. I'm going to come out here. I'm going to relaunch the game. I'm going to go back into 4K. So it looks like there's probably some scaling issues with my math. Um, yep. That's a bummer. I'll have a look at that math tomorrow and hopefully correct that. Every unit has a set number of action points that are spent by moving or perform. Actually, one more time. Um, I know that that's a problem. I'm going to come back here and go back into 1080p one last time so that we can make sure that the content is correct without getting distracted by other issues. So just focusing in on on the the content of the tutorials. Skipping again. Every unit has a set of action a set number of action points that are spent by moving or performing actions indicated here by two white boxes. These are refreshed at the start of each new round. Moving is a two-step process. First, select a destination hex to move to by clicking it with left mouse button. With the destination selected, you'll then select a direction to face by moving your pointer relative to the selected hex, then clicking with left mouse button or pressing space. You can see your current tactical objective along with a system menu and a control scheme cheat sheet by pressing escape. So there's the cheat sheet there. Um, eventually this will become customizable bindings so you'll be able to change how they work most abilities will target a single unit you can use the tab key to cycle through viable targets for the ability The maximum potential damage or healing of the selected ability will flash on the tar selected target's HUD. You can see important details about your current active target here. When you've selected a target, you can activate the ability by clicking the target again or by pressing space. Scenario Summary. This is the Scenario Summary. It will show details about the results of the battle you've just completed. I feel like uh, that's a little bit redundant there. Page 1. <clears throat> it will show the results of the battle you've just completed. The scenario objectives are listed here. Successful objectives may add to your experience or loot, so you should try to complete them whenever possible. Your surviving and slain heroes will be listed here, along with the experience they gained and a bar indicating progress to the next level up. So we're at 100%. Unclassed recruits will promote into a random class upon reaching level 1. This icon will show you what class they they have become. Or they became, they have become. 
They became. I think they became is probably right there. <clears throat> um, I do want to add some special effects, like maybe uh, something glowing or rotating there, just to really draw attention to it for promotions. I think that would um, help. Press this button to proceed to the treasure screen where you'll see what treasures you've earned from this battle can probably get scrapped. This section will contain a variety of crafting components, reagents, and occasionally average equipment. Select only one of these powerful upgrades to take with you in order to proceed. So I think there's only the advanced combat s uh, stuff to be going over here. So let's just continue playing now. I'm, I'm going to leave it in 1080p for a little while longer, um, but I'm just going to go ahead and continue playing so that we can get into some advanced topics. That's not true. That was not an opportunity attack. So something, this is a bug in my code, obviously. Something has flagged that basic attack as an opportunity attack, mistakenly. Uh, but we'll treat it as though that was correct and move on. You've performed an attack of opportunity. Uh, you've performed an attack of opportunity. This happened because a unit has either entered or left your influence and your character has vigilance. Also not true. Wait, the, the character has vigilance. Your influence is comprised of the three spaces directly in front of you. Vigilance is a passive talent that grants a number of opportunity attacks each turn, up to one less than your competence. Zero for untrained, one for trained, and two for veteran. These bonus attacks are refreshed at the end of your turn. Opportunity attacks can also be provoked by some abilities and items, like the scholar's heal ability or attacking with a bow. Try to be mindful of enemies with vigilance, because they're just waiting for an opportunity to end you. Hardy har. So the progress bar is working. I think there's still uh, essence and flanking and engagement. You've discovered a manual. Training manuals offer a powerful way to expand the capabilities of your heroes. Drop this item on your hero to learn it. Trained. Trained competence. This character doesn't have vigilance though. Oh, it does have Vigilance from the helmet. Um, that shouldn't be possible. So maybe helmets have whitelisted. Uh, it's possible that helmets have Vigilance whitelisted, which is uh, obviously an error. Moving on. Yes. Really? 
You've engaged your enemy in melee combat. Engagement indicates how two enemies on the battlefield are interacting with each other. A red line shows an incoming or defensive engagement. There's an ex or defensive engagement. There, that's confusing. Red line, uh, I think I just remove, um, let's go engagement page one. I think we just scratch or defensive, while a green line shows an outgoing one. An outgoing engagement. Maybe we can do a red line. Red and green lines show incoming and outgoing engagements respectively. A yellow line indicates mutual combat. We need to scratch a uh, mutual, scratch a. Uh. You can't engage enemies on your flank, the three spaces directly behind you. And the number of offensive engagements a character can have is limited by his or her competence. One for untrained, two for trained, and three for veteran. If you become engaged by more enemies than your competence allows, comma, you will become overwhelmed. I think we end the sentence there, you will become overwhelmed, period. Overwhelmed heroes suffer a stacking penalty to your to melee damage. If you become engaged by more enemies than your competence allows, comma. So again, I think so. We're referring to the hero. Where is it? A character. But then we're we're referring to you. You are not the character. So I think there's some context confusion there. Um, we need to clarify who exactly we're talking about. Am I getting a, a penalty or is the, the hero? I think I'm just going to go ahead and trigger the flanked. Actually, I don't know if her claws can do flanking. I guess we're going to find out, aren't we? Yeah, no, they can't. That was an opportunity attack. That was a real one. You've just taken damage to your conviction. 
Recall that conviction represents your courage in the face of adversity. Although losing your conviction isn't fatal, it will mean that after a certain point, your morale will break. Instinct will take over with a fight or flight response, and you'll lose control until you can gather your wits. Characters will try to rally each turn, with an increasing chance of success over time. But they'll remember what happened, and bad habits always die hard. What? What about Ed Sheeran? <clears throat> this character has gained level 2 and earned a skill point. Click here to switch to the talent tree for this character's class. I don't know anything about Ed Sheeran. I have no idea who that is. I've never listened to his music. I will change that tooltip because I don't want to be associated with musicians I've never heard of. Um, what was that? That was... Um, uh, morale. Apparently has Sheeran lyrics. Passive talents offer very powerful ways to upgrade your character. These talents will scale with your character's level, increasing in power with experience. You can select a single passive talent at each talent tier by clicking it twice. This choice is permanent and cannot be undone. Well, I don't want people associating my game with the Rolling Stones either, so I'll change it to something that is an ambiguous and can't be associated with any musician's lyrics, famous or not. So, we, oh, right. There's a reason we didn't get any stories right now. Um, that's because I have a developer override that's unlocked all the uh, stories, so they won't drop anymore for now. Wait. No. Oh, it's just the the depth buffer. The depth buffer buffer is picking up uh, the daggers particles on the tree. <laughs> I need to fix that. Where did they come from? <clears throat> At a certain point, your adventure will be complete. Whether in victory or defeat, you've come to the end of the road for this cycle. These items will be buried in a random location for you to find during your next playthrough. It's possible to create a legacy of very powerful items through successive gravestones. Affinity is a measure of the role you played, based on your responses during story-based encounters. 
This is the lens that non-player characters use to evaluate you. These statistics will be stored in the historical record of your most recent runs and contribute to your long-term achievements. Pressing this button will you return you to the main menu and delete your current run. Remember, recipes, classes, and relics you unlocked during this run are unlocked permanently. Use them. <coughs> so I'm going to go back to 4K. <coughs> Excuse me. I think there's only one that we haven't seen yet. That's the Essence Tooltip or Essence Tutorial, rather. And the only way to trigger that tutorial is by fighting the Seneschal or unliving. So hopefully we find some unliving. <coughs> there we go. Ask and ye shall receive. You've just taken damage to your essence. Recall that essence represents your soulful connection to the astral plane. Like your physical body, you must also care for your spiritual one. Characters who have their essence reduced to minus 10 or less will suffer an essence death. Essence death is permanent, just like physical death, but with one important difference. Characters who die of essence loss will rise again shortly after. As unliving. Emphasis mine. <laughs> A burning steel axe. Let's go. <coughs> Very bright. So what is that? Uh... Oh, I think it's because the, the axe is a shadow caster, but the, the light is emanating through it. So I'm just going to add a note here. Um, I want to set the matriarch on fire. Come on, light on fire. What's the uh, what's the chance? Uh, I didn't I didn't notice the the uh, percentage chance. I think I may have to start this over until I light her on fire. Yeah, all right. Look at that. Good stuff. Good to see it working. So I th I'm pretty sure helmets have vigilance whitelisted. That's definitely a bug.
So I'm going to go die intentionally so that I can drop my gravestone. I'm going to die. I'm I'm killing myself here. So I'm just going to let these two kill me. So that I can get the gravestone generated with these items here. Wait, I thought I had all three unlocked. Oh, I have the classes unlocked. So it's not going to generate stories. Oh boy. I have the, so I have a developer override right now that's unlocked the st the classes for me, but I didn't unlock the relics. The only way to get the relics is by unlocking the classes. So. I seem to have stubbed my stabbed myself in the foot with this one. Little trick, um, I haven't really had time to put it in a tooltip or a tutorial yet, but when you're dropping items on your character, you can hold shift to put it in the that side, or you can just put it on the right side. So right side, shift, left side. The same is true for trophies. These items will follow the same rules and any ambidextrous weapons. So if you have two daggers, for example, um, you can do the same trick with those. Just hold shift and it will put it in the secondary slot for that item. So trophy one, trophy two, main hand, off hand, ring one, ring two. Uh, just a little trick if you're out there and you're listening. I haven't had time or the space to put it in a tutorial, so it's gonna have to come some other way. But free plate armor is good. Uh, 
Now let's see if we can find that axe. Recipe for roast venison. Twice. Um, that's no good. So let me just make a note of that bug. Uh, so we have the recipe for roast venison now. We just need to get some venison, and I'm pretty sure that's what the other drop was supposed to be. It was supposed to be venison. So, sucks to be me, I guess. Just need a medical kit. And we just lost a bunch of stuff. Bandits in the night stole our stuff. At least we found the previous uh, gravestone, though. Oh, I also forgot. I added this here. You can click this to go directly to Reginald. So that's useful. We got our flaming axe back. Yeah. Let's go set some stuff on fire and show it to Twitter. Oh! You've encountered a merchant willing to trade with you. This is your inventory. These are the items stored in your caravan and does not include unclaimed items in the area. This area will show any items you elect to sell. You can split a stack of items by shift left clicking on them if you don't want to sell the entire stack. These are the items the merchant is offering to sell in exchange for the equivalent value in ducats or items or both. The items you wish to buy from the merchant will be moved here. The total transaction will be displayed here with the difference being shown on either side indicating that side to be receiving the remaining balance in coin. When you're satisfied with the trade, or if you change your mind, you can confirm or cancel. If you dismiss a merchant, you can always find them again on the menu bar above. Yeah, uh, the merchant is randomly generated, so you might find the merchant literally anywhere. Um, there's only one merchant per zone. So, um, what do we want? Uh, I think we're happy with our weapon right now. We don't need vigilance because we're on a soldier right now, but I'll definitely take those bandages. And then I'll take the rest of his gold, I guess. Sell off the stuff we don't need. That'll work. All right. So let's go set some stuff on fire with that sweet axe we picked up.
Uh oh. You've been flanked. Attacking or being attacked from behind is considered a flanking attack. Although flanking on its own is mostly harmless, some abilities, weapons, and talents can turn it into a potentially lethal advantage. I think Reginald might be set up for some death here. Where's that archer coming from? There he is. Oh, <laughs> this is not good. Come here, you bastard. Uh, poison's probably going to be lethal. Yeah, and he was ter- that sucks. I ran out of morale right at the end. At least we got some sweet plate and an axe to find on our next playthrough. Uh, Reginald, Reginald survived for nine days. Not bad. So, uh, I really wish I hadn't done that developer uh, override. I'd really like to be using three heroes right now. Um, testing the most complex combat situations that I can, but um, testing with just one is just fine too. A useless amulet with the stuck tooltip. Nice. There we go. I'm just going to make a note. I want to make sure that the uh, encounter dialogue dismisses all tooltips before it disposes itself. Um. Oh, come on.
Finally. That's a bug.
Well, there goes that flaming axe forever. That's a bummer. 16 days though, almost two weeks. I think that's it for tonight.